And then number three, how many of you are still tracking with me today? Singleness is a blessing because of the passing of the world. Everything around you is actually temporary. It's all going to pass away, right? This is what Paul says. Remember, I've got to preach from the word today because I've been married for 40 years and don't have a lot of experience being single. Single, so I'm preaching the word. This is what it says. But this I say, brethren, the time is short so that from now on, even those who have wives should be as though they had none. Those who weep as though they did not weep. Those who rejoice as though they did not rejoice. And those who buy as though they did not possess. And those who use this world as not misusing it, for the form of this world is passing away. Now, how many of you realize that you don't get to take your stuff with you to heaven? Your 401k stays here. Your money stays here. Ladies, your shoes stay here. You know... Uh, you, you, you don't get to take that with you to heaven. And basically what Paul is saying in this chapter about singleness and marriage, he's saying that actually marriage has no relationship to eternity. Did you hear that? He's describing the form of this world. Marriage is a part of that. And he says, he, he describes it sorrow, material things. It's all passing away. Marriage is a part of the passing away. And so, so here's the key. Don't hold on too close to this world because guess what? It's all passing away anyway. Anyway, you're going to be here for a while and you're going to blink and guess what? You're going to be gone, all right? And some people get so stressed out over their stuff. But listen, it's okay to enjoy your stuff, right? I enjoy my stuff, sure. But let me tell you something. It's all passing away. And sometimes people act as though marriage is going to go on forever. And that's actually kind of a nice, sweet, romantic notion, right? Together forever for all of eternity. You need to study the Bible. No, it's not. Sorry, <laughs> you won't be together forever as husband and wife uh, all the way through eternity. That's a nice thought, but it's just not so. You say, well, I, will I not love my partner in heaven? Of course you will. You're going to have perfect love towards everybody. W will I know my partner in heaven? Of course you will. But that partner will no longer be there for physical fulfillment, for procreation, or for the joy that's part of this temporal life. Marriage is temporary. So here's what I've got to say about that. You can write this down in your notes today. Don't sweat about what is temporary. How many of you are getting what I'm saying? Don't worry about it. Marriage is passing. Marriage will soon give way to uh, our, heavenly our, our heavenly family life with God the Father, Christ the husband, and all believers the wife. Now, that's kind of hard for all us guys, right? I, mean, I don't want to be the wife. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, you know, it's kind of weird for us to talk like that. But it's not talking about the same thing as marriage on the earth. It's talking about being together with Christ, being close to him, right? And so what he's saying is saying weeping is going to cease and, and, and joy is going to come with the Lord. And he, earthly joy is going to fade into an eternal joy and buying is going to cease. And so we will inherit everything in the entire new heaven and the new earth and, and the new earth will never lack for anything. We'll never need to buy anything. Isn't that wonderful? Some of you ladies are thinking, well, what am I going to do if I can't shop? Hello, I don't know. I'm sure God will have something for us to do up there. And uh, some of you today, you might be single, and you may be feeling like, you know, it I just never worked out for me. And it wasn't your fault that it didn't work out. But let me just say this. Don't stress about something that's temporary anyway. Just let it go. How do you think that's going to come counsel from the Apostle Paul? It's temporary, so don't stress about it. Paul's advice is this. He says, instead of focusing on stuff, instead of focusing on finding someone, instead of focusing on grieving over something that didn't work out in the past, he says, listen, why don't you focus on the things that are eternal in life? Focus on your relationship with God. Focus on that which
which is going to stay throughout eternity. Come on, somebody give the Lord a hand of praise. That's good counsel for everybody. Amen? And then number four, the fourth reason why singleness is a blessing is because of the preoccupation of the married. I'm going to put it like this, and you've heard this little saying. You probably even said it. If mama ain't happy, what about daddy? What about if daddy ain't happy? Okay, nobody's happy, right? And uh, why? Because when you're married, you've got all these other worries. You've got all these preoccupations. It's a blessing not to have those. First Corinthians 7. Y'all don't believe what I'm saying, do you? First Corinthians 7, verse 32 and verse 33. I'm just going to preach the Bible. If you don't believe me, believe the Apostle Paul, okay? This is what he says. He says, I want you to be without care. How many of you say, that's how I'd like to live my life? If you're married, you can't go get divorced because of this sermon. All right, that's a footnote I need to put in there somewhere. All right. All right, but he says, I want you to be without care. And then he goes on to say, he who is unmarried cares for the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But he who is married cares about the things of the world, how he may please his wife. Are there any husbands who would say amen? Thank you, Carlos. I appreciate it a lot. Appreciate that. Amen. This is probably the greatest point that Paul gives to singles, okay? He says, if you're married, you've got a lot of worries. I mean, for example, there are things that I have to do around my house uh, to please my wife. And I love my wife, but I just cannot sell the house, sell my car, buy a motorcycle, ride it all over America for the next 18 months in order to get involved in motorcycle ministry. I can't do that. Why? Because I'm married. And besides that, the Lord didn't call me to do that. Don't really want to do that, all right? I can't just pack up and move to India to begin to minister to the orphans over there. Why? Because I'm married and I have to filter my service to the Lord through our expectations of our life together. And I'm content with all of that. But if you're single, all the single people, this is for you. You're free. Somebody say amen. amen. The world is open to you. You don't have any preoccupations. You don't have any worries like Mary's folks. And that's a blessing. It's a blessing because guess what? You get to serve the Lord in powerful ways if you want to. You don't have to worry about what a husband says or what a wife says. Is there anybody who's single today that at least says, I enjoy that freedom? Come on. Paul, now, now what Paul doesn't say, and this is what Satan does. Satan says, oh yeah, singles, you're free, but use that freedom as a means to gratify the things that you want in your life. Paul doesn't do that. Paul says, listen, you're free as a single, but take that energy, take that effort, and instead of pleasing yourself, use your life to please the Lord. And you say, well, what is it that pleases the Lord? Serving others. Serving others. The truth is that singles should be more involved in serving God than the married because married people have to please the husband, the wife, and the kids. Do I have a witness Amen. in the house today? Come on. We need some applause in here because I'm just preaching the Bible. That's all I'm doing. And when you're single, you have more time on your hands. You have more time to serve. You say, well, Pastor, where do I begin? You can begin right with your family, right? Serve your family. That's a good thing. Uh, you have grandparents. Paint, paint their house for them, for example. All right. Help your mom clean out the garage when she's getting older. The list is almost endless. Be the greatest auntie that ever walked the face of the earth. Come on. If you're a true believer in Jesus, God is looking for you to do the things that please him. So I'm just telling all the singles today that if you're single, you need to get out of the house and get busy for Jesus. Amen. 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 You say, well, Pastor, you don't understand. It just gets so lonely at Christmas, at the holidays. And there's no one to cook for, no one to be with. Listen, be the initiator. Find some people. Just say, look, come to my house, would you? Come to, you, you don't even have to wait until.
until Christmas. Just find some people. Gather them in your house. Have a good time. Enjoy life. Amen. Amen. Decide to make an impact with your life. Amen. Boy, oh boy. I thought this preaching, this was, anyway, it's fun to preach the word, isn't it? I don't know if I ought to say these things that I wrote down. How many think I ought to just go ahead and say them? Ladies, if you are single, you don't need any more shoes. You can only, I actually wrote this stuff. I know, it must have been the devil made me do it, all right? You can only wear one pair at a time. Buy some shoes for somebody else. And guys, if you're single, how many guns do you need? You don't need a weapon in every single drawer. Hello. You can only shoot them one at a time. And guess what? When you're single, it's your checkbook. Hallelujah. You don't got to get permission from the wife to spend the money. Hello. You don't have to get permission from the husband or come into agreement. You can just be generous for the Lord at all times and generous for others. Amen. And some of you think, well, my life is just so boring because it's single. Uh, no, don't you use that as an excuse. You can do all kinds of things. Save up your money and go on a mission trip somewhere. Hello. Go and ask Ask, uh, ask Isabella what that's like. Come on. You can do these kinds of things. Amen. I mean, you know, it's enough already of binge watching on Netflix, right? Let's get busy and do something for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. You don't have to wait. You don't have to worry. You don't have all those preoccupations. You have the ability to go help your neighbor mow the lawn if he's 76 and it's hot outside. Come on. You've got, you've got the ability to do all kinds of things for him and for his glory. You are not preoccupied with anything. And Paul goes on, he says this, 1 Corinthians 7, 34, 35. How many of you think at least this is an interesting sermon? Amen. All right, here it is. He says, there's a difference between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman cares about the things of the Lord, that she may be holy both in body and in spirit. But she who is married cares about the things of the world, how she must please, how she may please her husband. And Paul goes on, he says, And this I say for your own profit, not that I may put a leash on you, but for what is proper, and that you may serve the Lord without distraction. Oh, wow. What a powerful blessing that must be for those who are singles. Amen. You get to get a better reward when you get to heaven because you can serve the Lord without distraction. You can pray all day long and it won't bother anybody, right? You can listen to praise and worship and music in your house. You can have it up as loud as you want to have it. Amen. Nobody's in there trying to sleep. You can stay up all night if you want to. Oh, what a blessing to be single. I can't believe I'm even preaching this. Amen. <laughs> All right. You're still with me. We're moving right through these here today. Okay, number five. And we're going to end with this one. 